In the beauty of your splendor I find peace In your presence, O oh Lord, is joy You have been my strength in times of need I bow before your throne, Abba Father, Abba Father, mighty God, mighty God, Abba Father, Abba Father, you were man of war, Abba Father, Abba Father, I bow, I bow before your throne, Ibuchimo.
Yahweh Sabao begin to call on him Yahweh Sabao Yahweh Sabao Yahweh Sabao Yahweh Sabao Yahweh King of glory, the Lord of hosts, the mighty man of war, the one who is excellent in strength and power. Hallelujah.
our daily devotional titled Power to Triumph. It runs from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. from Monday to Friday on Sunny Adeni Ministries channel on YouTube and Facebook. Do not miss your opportunity to live triumphantly. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, click on the notification bell and like, and follow Sunny Adeni Ministries on YouTube and Facebook as well. Good news, are you looking for your own company that will join you in prayers just like the apostles did in Acts chapter 4 verse 23? KJV, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priest and elders had said unto them. Then join a daily prayer that meets on the church prayer conference line, 587-400-8496 on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. This Sunday at Joy Overflow is Easter Sunday and our end of the month Thanksgiving and celebration service. It's a day of testimonies, a day to thank God for all his blessings to the Joy Overflow family and to celebrate all those born in this month and celebrate the resurrection of our dear Savior, Jesus Christ. It will be a combined service with presentations from our children, teenagers, young adults, and drama group. Please give all those born in the month a few minutes of your time at the end of the service as we cut their birthday cake and pray for them. The service runs from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Good news. Our first praise night in 2024 will hold this Friday, March 29th, 2024. Do you feel indebted in gratitude for all that God has done for you since this year began? Then it is time to give him all the glory at this night of mega praise. The time is 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Good news. Our 2024 second quarter marathon fasting and prayer would hold from Wednesday, April 3rd to Friday, April 5th. We shall meet in the church on Wednesday and Thursday to pray from 6.30 p.m. and on Friday from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. for encounter night. Please prepare for an encounter with God that will open up the second quarter of the year for multiple breakthroughs in Jesus' name. Please note that we shall not be breaking our fast until day three at the encounter night. However, you can take some tea, water, coffee, or juice to stay hydrated only in the evening. The young adults of JOICC, also known as the Joyful Squad, will be having their next young adults hang out on Saturday, March 30th by 6 p.m. in the church auditorium. It will be a night of engaging discussions as we welcome a guest speaker on that day to speak to the young adults on handling stress and anxiety biblically. It promises to be a refreshing time. All young adults in and outside JOICC are welcome to attend. Good news. The 2024 Total Woman Conference holds at JOIC Calgary from Friday, April 26th to Sunday, April 28th. The theme is Awake, and it is for both men and women. There shall be one session from 6.30 p.m. on Friday, one session from 10.30 a.m. on Saturday, and one general session at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday. Please take time off work to be a part of this glorious conference. Watch this clip. Hallelujah.
It's a privilege to be in the presence of the Lord again tonight. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many of us are glad to be here tonight? Shall we bow our heads or you probably want to stand up as we take a few minutes to worship our Father. The Bible speaking in John 4, 23, he said, The time comes when through worshipers we worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And the Father seeks such. The Father seeks such. So you can put yourself on God's most wanted list of people on the earth, of God's most favorite people on the earth, when you are a true worshiper. Let's take one or two minutes to worship our Father. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King of kings. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the Please lift up your hands to him this morning, uh, this evening. Let him see your heart. Let him see that you are a true worshiper and you are worshiping him in spirit. See the Lord before you tonight. Exalt him, magnify him, give him all the glory. He deserves all the glory. Aleto zira de hatai data luma mona shalidada do rakilate alita namahatu latero do ziame. I worship you, Lord. Let's ask the Lord tonight and say, Lord, I am here at your feet to lay. Open my eyes. Open my ears. Let my spirit man catch a word. Send a word to me tonight. Lord, I have come here not business as usual, business unusual. Speak to my heart. Let the word come with fire. Let the word come with power. Let the word come like a hammer. Let it break every rock to pieces. Let the word come like fire. Let it burn off every child. Tonight, am I upon this Mount Zion? Ah, there shall be holiness. There shall be deliverance. And I shall possess everything that you, me you meant for me tonight. I give you praise. Ah, little Hoto. Holy Spirit, use my words. Use my mouth as the pen of a ready writer. Write on the spirits of everyone here tonight in person and online. Let your word come powerfully and bring great victories for everyone under the sound of my voice. We take authority over every foul distracting force of Satan, every Jezebel spirit, every demonic oppression, every hold of Satan and his host. Mane Talabia, I bind you and I cast you out of here forever. In the name of Jesus, I ask for the fresh release of the Spirit of God and empowerment of everyone tonight. Thank you, Father, and the people of God will say, Amen. Hallelujah. Shake hands with one or two people and thank God. Thank God for their lives. Say, I thank God for your life. I thank God for your life. Hallelujah. Let's be comfortably seated. Hallelujah. Now, tonight, brethren, we'll be looking at the Rounding Up series for our Bible study titled Building Capacity. Everyone, let's say it together. Building Capacity. We have been looking at it in the last three weeks. Today is the last of the day that we'll be looking at it. Um, by way of introduction, I have, we have severally defined Building Capacity repeatedly but for the purpose of this bible study tonight it will be simply defined as the ability to carry through god's mandate for your life let's say that together 
the ability to carry through God's mandate for your life. In other words, it is that place where you need to be to be able to finish strong and finish well the assignment that God has for your life. And may I let you know that your life is in volumes and chapters. Say, my life is in volumes and chapters documented in God's book. Psalm 139 verse 16. Look at what it says. Let's read together. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in whose book? In whose book? So God has a book. Say with me, God has a book. And look at it. Every moment. What does every moment mean? It's even smaller than minutes. Every second was laid out before a single day had passed. So the fullness of your life, every moment of your life, the time when you'll be promoted, the time when you'll be increased, the time when you'll be blessed, the time when you get married, or every moment was laid out, written in God's book before you came to the earth. So God has a book that has your name on it and has every moment of your life. So it is your own prerogative and very important for you to discover what it is. Now, your divine mandate is what you were created to accomplish on earth within your lifetime. So within the lifetime, 80, 90, 100, where Sister Victoria, she wants to live for 150, wonderful. Within the number of years that you have here on earth, there is something written. It is not the same thing. How many of us know that God is a God of variety? God is a God that is dynamic. He loves varieties. So all through your life, it's not all green. It's not all blue. It's not all red. It's a little bit of yellow, pink, white, black, red, and all of that. That is who our God is. Ephesians 2.10. Look at what the Bible says. For we are his workmanship. We were at the men's fellowship on Saturday, and I was describing what workmanship is. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, created unto good works, which God had before ordained, that we should walk in them. That what you do about his plan for your life, walk in them. A plan you don't walk in is as useless as if you don't even know it at all. When there is God's plan for your life, and you don't walk in it, it is useless. So, but God says, you and I are his workmanship. What's the meaning of workmanship? Now, have you seen a carpenter who wants, who has been told to come and quote for a job, and they've told him, bring a sample. Maybe he wants to make a chair for the people. Do you think he will make an anyhow chair that somebody will sit down and fall? No, he will make the best of the chair and carry it, paint it well, present it so well. That's workmanship. So, God is saying, you are that man, that woman, that is an ideal spiritual man or woman. And I'm proud to show you off to the world. You were created in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, divine mandates require capacity. Divine mandates. Do, does what? A. a who is making that noise? If his brother said, please bring him here. He's going to be teaching with me tonight. Please get every of those children to be quiet. Otherwise, we'll bring them downstairs. Divine mandates require capacity. For example, Jesus was born to take away the sin of the world. His journey began as what? A baby. Now, that little baby that was born in the hand of Mary... Let's say that's the baby that is going to die for our sins. Would that be right? No. He was born as a baby. He grew up into a child. He grew up into an adolescent. And when he was about 30, he had grown physically, emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. That was when he became qualified to begin his public ministry. Until you are matured emotionally, intellectually, physically, and spiritually, you cannot do God assignment for your life. 
Now, and unless you walk in what God has ordained for you, frustration never ceases. How many of us have seen frustrated believers before? Totally frustrated. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to go. The reason is that they are out of sync with what God has planned for them. But tonight, you shall be connected again. Now, look at what the, the life of Jesus. Luke 180. Luke 180. Let's read this. John grew up and became strong in spirit and he lived in the wilderness until he began his public ministry to Israel. That was John. What do you think he was doing in the wilderness? He was building capacity. He was eating locusts and wild honey. He was hearing from the Lord, developing strength, developing emotional, developing physical capabilities for the assignment that God had for him. In Luke 2.40, look at what the Bible says of Jesus. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom and God's favor was on him. Verse 40, 42 please. Look at verse, when Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. So he was born the day 1, day 10, day 365, year 2, year 5, year 10, and year 12 when he began to go out. Now, in verse 52, look at what the Bible says about Jesus still. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. Luke 3, 23. Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his public ministry. Jesus was known as the son of Joseph, Joseph the son of Haley. Why didn't he start his ministry when he was 29? Why did he start? He didn't start when he was 25, when he was 16, when he was 17. Do you ever wonder? It was because capacity was not fully built. So if the Son of God needed built capacity to do the assignment of God for his life, if God Almighty, born as a, in flesh and blood, needed capacity, needed to grow physically, spiritually, emotionally, to be able to do the assignment of God for his life, then you and I need capacity. Say, I need capacity. But before then, he was in hiding, even though he was the son of God. Let me show this to you. Very strange scripture. John 7, 8 and 9. You go. I am not going to this festival because, why? Say it out loud. My time has not yet come. And after saying these things, Jesus remained in Galilee. Verse 9. Verse 9, please. Next verse. We don't have time. Verse 9. After saying these things, what did Jesus do? Jesus remained in Galilee. So it wasn't time. Until the time that your capacity is built, there is nothing that can happen around your life. So I encourage you, build capacity. Tell three people, build capacity. Did you tell three? Now, there are other examples of scriptures. In scriptures, Moses, Gideon, Samson, David, and many more. But let me ask you, when David was 17, he was anointed king. When did he become king? When he was 30. So between 17 and 30, what was he doing? He was building capacity to be able to finish strong. Now, do you wonder why many people don't finish strong and finish well? They don't finish the assignment of God for their life. Capacity is not strong enough. And the Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, what happens? Your strength is small. Your capacity is small. I pray in the name of Jesus, God's assignment for your life will not fail in your hand. Now, what is divine mandate? This is God's specific assignment for you. It is your ministry or your calling. Divine mandate is not your ambition. Now, how many of us know we have been called as kings and priests? Kings in the marketplace, priests in the heavenly places, in the church places. As kings and priests, all both of them, as God has enabled individual. Now, divine mandate is not your ambition. I'm not talking, we are not talking about ambition. It is what God commands you to do. A Bible-based ambition does not necessarily constitute a divine mandate. 
I'll show you one Bible-based uh, 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 um, one Bible-based ambition. There was a man called Moses in the Bible. In Acts chapter 7, 23 to 25, look at it. One day, Moses was 40 years old. He decided to visit his relatives, the people of Israel. He saw an Egyptian mistreating an Israelite. So Moses came to the defense and avenged him killing the Egyptian. Isn't that a good thing to do? Wasn't he fighting for the people of God? But the timing was wrong. He had, he had no idea of how God wanted him to do it. Now, every assignment of God for your life has a what, has a when, and has a how. Until those questions can be answered by you, you are not ready to fulfill God's assignment for your life. That was a good ambition, but that was not what God wanted him to do. Do you know that simple act in the life of Moses added 40 more years to the time that the children of Israel were going to be freed from bondage? They spent 30 more years in bondage, 430 years, when God wanted them to live when they were 400 years. But I believe, that's my own belief, the scripture didn't say that. I believe that Moses' mistake was one of those reasons why they had that extension of time. So be careful how you run God's agenda for your life. It is not by imagining. No, you must hear a specific word from the Lord. So I said, divine mandate will only be enforced when heaven has spoken. It is what heaven speaks that heavens can confirm. Consider the case of Moses that we have looked at. Your divine mandate must be discovered and not crafted by you. So it's not for you to craft, to think about it. How am I going to do it and put it together and say it this way and say, no, that's not heaven's mandate for you. It has to be discovered like we read in Ephesians 2.10. Now, how do we successfully fulfill divine mandate? Through building capacity. Number one, no building will ever rise beyond the bearing capacity of its foundation. I've said this to us severally. I, I went to go and look at it. When the bow building downtown, how many of us know the bow? And Kana bow building, that curved building, that's about 58 floors. When the foundation was being laid, the foundation was laid for about five days they kept pumping concrete into the floor. Five days with trailers and trailers of concrete. Tons and tons of concrete being poured into the bow building. I had to go and look at it. Sleepless nights. They were there for five days. What was the only assignment? Pumping concrete into the base of that building. Why? Because of how high it's going to be. If your foundation is not strong enough, it cannot carry the assignment of God for your life. That's one reason why you and I need to build foundation. Very strong capacity. You cannot be apportioned anything from God above your capacity. Matthew 25, 15. Look at what it says. He gave five bags of silver to one two of silver to another, one bag of silver to the last. Divide, let's read that last part together. Dividing it in proportion to their abilities. Now you can imagine if Jesus did not discern or that owner did not discern and he gave the man that had one, one talent, he gave him the five, what will have been his return? Zero. He will have come back from his trip and the man with the one who, had, who now got the five, will have said, I didn't do anything with the five. So he gave it according to their abilities and he left on the strip. Change of level is changing from one level of glory to another, but glory is defined in terms of weight in the kingdom. 2 Corinthians 4.17 For our light affliction which is for but a moment, worketh a far more exceeding, the word I'm bringing out there is eternal weight of glory. Glory has weight. If the glory that was put on Jesus is put on you today, I can tell you, you will crumble. 
unless you have built the capacity that Jesus built. How many years did it take Jesus to build the capacity to be able to carry the world? 30 years. And what was he doing? Was it that he was idle all through? No. No. The Bible didn't give us the full detail, but some of the times he went to the temple. He was sitting with doctors and lawyers asking them questions. There was a time he was asking questions, and there was a time he was the one they were, they were asking the questions. Why? He had built capacity. So you need capacity for what God has for you. It is capacity that determines how much weight can be entrusted to your life and my life. We need to awake to the responsibility of cap spiritual capacity development. Here are a few tips. For instance, you are a professor. You have a son you love so much. Can you bequeath your professorship to him? Can you give it to him? Say, you know what? This certificate, I'm about to die, but this certificate of professorship, I give it to you. Continue to be a professor. You think they will, people will take that from you? The system will laugh at you. Why? The boy doesn't have capacity. If he wants to be a professor, what should he do? Build capacity. Go to school. Study and study. And then he becomes a professor. It is in the same way that God cannot bequeath to you what you don't have the capacity for. He cannot give it to you. That's why so many people are still at the same level. Why? They are not growing. They are not building capacity. So, here are a few tips. Number one, be truly saved. Brethren, the word salvation is no joke. And how you know is Jesus left his throne in heaven. He came down here for 30 years. And the only thing he came to do was to get you saved. He suffered. He went through ridicule. He was ridiculed. And at the end, they lied against him. They called him names. He was beaten. He was battered. He was broken. If he didn't know what he was doing, he would have given up. But he didn't give up. Why? He was truly pursuing your salvation. Now, having done that, having gone all through that, he saved you at the end. Now, that's why the Bible was saying, anyone, how can you escape if you, if, you, if you neglect the salvation message being preached? How can you escape? He said the only thing that is waiting for that person is punishment. Why? Jesus died. You didn't believe in him. You were playing with your salvation. Today in sin, tomorrow in sin, you wake up today, you are up, tomorrow you are down. You keep falling and rising every day. And you think God will accommodate that. I can tell you no. So you must be truly saved. You must be true. There must be a day that you heard the word. And the Holy Spirit worked on your heart to change you. He is the only one that changes persons. It's not your, your own making. It's not what you're calling together. Oh yes, because I've been going to church. Because I was born in a church. No, that's not how to be saved. So I said, faith in Christ as the Son of God and the only one by whom all men might be saved. Total and sincere submission to the sovereignty of God over our lives and the complete subjugation of our will to the Lord. When this happens, ambition dies and self-will is destroyed. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. That is true. There is no other way. Look at Luke twenty two forty two, 42. Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, not my will, but thy will be done. Now, many of us, all of us, need to get to the point where we say, Lord, it's not what I will, but what you want me to do. It's not what I will. If you choose what you will above what he wills for you, you are on your own. I make bold to say you are on your own, totally disconnected from divinity. I pray that person is not here tonight. I said, I pray that person is not here tonight. Now, number two, you must grow in obedience to God. A sheep is only fully secured when it is vulnerable and obedient to the shepherd's voice. 
Note that obedience is learned through our life experiences. Now, obedience must be learned. It is learned from the simple tests, the simple things you go through. Oh, now go and get this done. You are not obedient, and yet you want the will of God to be done in your life? No. God does not waste his time. What did I say? God does not waste his time. And he will never let anyone waste his time. A, full, a sheep is fully secured when it is vulnerable and obedient to the shepherd's voice. Note that obedience is learned through our life experiences. Hebrews 5, 8. Even though Jesus was God's son, let's read that part together. He learned obedience from the things he suffered. The word suffered there means the things he went through. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Who also, oh, 10 verse 6, I'm sorry. 10 verse 6. Please write it down when we get to go take a look at it. It's 10 verse 6 where it was saying, let's read together. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So you cannot live in obedience and want the devil to obey you. I cast you out. Get out in the name of Jesus. He will ask you, are you obedient? Like the seven scones of Scepha. We command you, do you evil spirit, come out in the name of Paul, which in the name of Jesus, which Paul preaches. He said, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know. Who are you? See, Satan will ask who you are if you are not living in obedience to God. He will check out your life. And it's available in the spirit realm to see. Number C. Hunger for a dynamic relationship with the Word of God. The Word of God is the food for our spirit man. The scripture is given to build up the believer. The scripture is given to furnish or equip the Christian minister to fulfill the work that God has called him to do. The scripture is also is to be constantly and dutifully studied by Christian ministers and workers so that they won't be put to shame in a book bid to fulfill their divine mandate. So, the Bible describes the word of God as the sword of the spirit in Ephesians chapter 6. So, you need to study that word. Imagine a soldier who is going to war without a gun, without a sword. What happens to him? He will soon be killed. So, the word of God is to help you Go through, push through, encourage you, build you up. Acts 20, 32. Look at what the scripture says. Let's read together. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if you want to avoid shame in that assignment that God has given you, you must know his word. Number D or four, maintain a functional prayer life. It is not the carnal need of oriented frivolities that is called prayer today. Do you know why many people pray? Lord, I need bread, food, 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 clothes, shoe, bag, house, money. That's the kind of prayer. That's not what I'm saying. That won't build your spiritual capacity. Prayer that builds your spiritual capacity must focus on what God does in you and not what God does for you. Your prayer must be what God is doing in the inside of you. What we call Pauline prayer fits in here. Prayer of consecration which helps to empty you of you and creates room to fill you with God. Fasting to seek God in prayer. Not because you have a problem. Praying in the spirit will build you up. Brethren, when there is a level you get to in prayer that the first one hour, two hours, you are just there in, pre in the presence of God, submitting to him, honoring him, worshipping him, and giving him the glory that is due. There is that level you get to in prayer. It's not Lord, bless, uh, oh, God, bless this person. Bless this person. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. No, no, no. Jude 20, Jude 20. 
Study to be what ye be loved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Number F E. Seek an integrated, integrated fellowship life. I've used the word integrated on purpose because what is common in our days is what I call segregated fellowship meetings. Segregated. When brethren come to, to, for fellowship, that one is doing his own, this one is doing her own, and everybody is segregated. What God wants us to do is, as we come together tonight, we are talking to ourselves, we are praying, somebody brings a word, somebody brings a psalm, somebody brings an exhortation, and that integrated fellowship, that was the one that the apostles had. Something close to what Jew, the Jews were doing in the time of the early church. Fellowship builds. The early church did not joke with fellowship. Both the leaders and the led fellowship together with the Lord. Ministerial fellowship was common, and this was purposely to seek the Lord. Not for networking or building followership after a great man of God, but after Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 and 44. And they, let's read together, they continued haphazardly, steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. Verse 44. And all they, all that believe, we are together, say together, they were together and they had all things common. Your heart knitted with mine, focusing on the same thing, focusing on Jesus, having the same goals. That is what integrated fellowship means. Verse 46. Verse 46, please. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking up bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. They were not having any issue. They just came together. Let's minister to the Lord. The Holy Ghost said. That's the type that the Holy Ghost speaks. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And lastly, build professional capacity. By professional capacity, I'm referring to your profession as a minister of God. Your job as a worker in the Lord's vineyard. It does not matter if you are working for God full-time, part-time, or no time. Every one of us involved in kingdom service ought to be so professionally minded. Get well equipped. If you need to go to school, please do so. Paul learnt at the feet of the apostles in Jerusalem, building up capacity for ministry, Acts 9, 27 and 28. Look at what it says. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how he had seen the Lord in the way and he had spoken to him and he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them, coming in and going out in Jerusalem. What was he doing? Learning. Be a reader. This one I find very strange among believers. Many don't read. If I ask you now, how many books have you read this month? Have you looked at any book? No. Be a reader. A leader is a reader. How well you read will determine how well you lead. Apostle Paul was a reader. How well you read will determine how well you lead. Apostle Paul was a consummate Christian leader, but he was also an avid reader. 2 Timothy 4.13 When you come, be sure to bring the coat I left with Kapos at Troas. Also bring my book. Books, and especially my papers. So build your relational or social capacity. The minister of God is a social being. He must learn and improve his relational skills. 1 Timothy 3, 1 to 7 is a fairly long read, but it was telling us about who the qualification of leaders in the church are, who a deacon is, who a pastor is, who a general overseer is. Build your physical capacity. You need a healthy body to perform well in your duty as a servant of God. Eat right, exercise, dress well, so that your physical look does not frustrate your ministry role. Build your financial capacity as well. Your ability to manage and master money is critical for ministerial success. In conclusion, I said, the key to fulfilling God's mandate is to constantly evaluate and self-examine 
to see where amendments must be done. Not to the divine mandate. Amendment not to the divine mandate because it is fixed, but to your ways and what? Capacity. Be true to self. Take corrective measure continuously. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Let's read. Examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourself, not other people. Test yourself. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. Revelation 3, 2 and 3. Wake up. Strengthen what little remains, for even what is left is almost dead. I find your actions do not meet the requirements of my God. This is the warning now. Go back to what you heard and believed at first. Hold to it how? Firmly. Repent and turn to me again. If you don't wake up, I will come to you suddenly as unexpected as a thief. Are you blessed tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So, questions, please. Question time. What have you heard from week one to week four? What is that thing that you don't understand and want to know more about your capacity? Questions. Brother Henry, I choose you to ask questions. Thank you, sir. Um, I was just looking at the professional capacity, um, wondering how someone and like um, manage if you're in a profession, how you can be able to successfully manage that profession. It's possible to be in a profession full time and serve God like in a full time way. Yes, it's possible. I did that before. Uh, I, professional accountant to the glory of God, CPA, full job and full time pastoring. Um, so you don't desire it. If God does not call you into it, don't do it. If he calls you, he will enable you, he will give you the divine backing, and he will give you the power to do well in your profession and to do well in ministry. So that's your role as a king and priest. Many of, some of us are called as kings and priests. And some of us are called as kings only. You're a nurse, you're a doctor, you're an accountant, you're a lawyer, beautiful, all for God. And that's why the Bible tells us, when you do anything like that, do it as unto the Lord. Whether you are a nurse, as unto the Lord. Whether you are an accountant, as unto the Lord. Whether you are an engineer, as unto the Lord. Whether you are a pastor, as unto the Lord. Whether you are a deacon, as unto the Lord. Whatever it is that you are doing, let it be done as unto the Lord. And God gives the grace for that professional ability to do it. And then you find that both of them are doing well. You are doing well professionally. You are doing well in kingdom and all of them are flowing together. I did it for many years. Yes. Was, uh, 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 Can we throw this microphone away, please? <laughs> There are people who probably did not get the privilege to go to school, um, maybe due to, you know, poverty in the family or any kind of thing that happened. And eventually they gave their life to Christ and, you know, built spiritual capacity or probably intellectual capacity is lacking. And maybe um, they probably have the limitation of uh, communicating effectively. Do you think that God can still call a person and give him a role that may require him to
to you know travel out and you know maybe start up a ministry and and all of all of those. Okay, thank you so much. Now, brethren, I'll give you an example from scripture, uh, but the answer is what God calls you for is what He qualifies you for. God does not call the qualified; He qualifies the called. So if he has a calling that will make you talk to kings and queens and all of that, it's not what you studied at Harvard or you went to study in the university. He will give you that intellectual. I know a man of God today. He didn't go to school. But when he speaks kings, presidents, they listen to him. They listen to him. Why? God enabled him and empowered him. However, the 21st century man of God must be somewhat intellectual. You need that intellectual capacity. If God does not take you there, then you go there yourself. Learn, study, go to school. As I am right now, I'm in school. I'm running a master's program in theology. And as the Lord strengthens me, I may even go higher than that and become a professor to the glory of God. As the Lord enables me. Do you get it? So you need to develop yourself. But I'm saying it's not a limitation if God wants you to do it. But by the way, why would someone not even give himself to intellectual studies? Why? Why? If the opportunity is there, why not? don't you do it? If it takes going back to college, that's why we have several types of colleges where people can go and learn. You know, there are so many of them make up courses here and there and to make you get to that point. But my general opinion is that we all need that intellectual capacity because our world is changing and we must be dynamic. We must learn the times and the season. We must have the information about our world today and that is what will make us excel. Yes, you were lifting up your hand. Here. Yeah, yeah, I praise the Lord. Thank you, Daddy, for this uh, teaching. I'm just enjoying it so much. Um, like what you said uh, concerning the, first of all, the, I know you have answered the Brother uh, Henry about, um, you know, if you can uh, be a full-time Christian and a full-time working, uh, a full-time worker and still, you know, succeed. Just like Daddy said, if you are not given that strength, because I have seen so many pastors, some pastors I know that I have had too, that uh, their families just become chaos because they focus on the ministry and they neglect family. Or they focus on the ministry and neglect other things that they need to be done. If God has called you and given you the strength, you have to balance two of them know how to balance it so that you'll be able to succeed. And again, succeeding again, I mean, if being possible for being a full-time ministry and a worker, in the Bible, I remember uh, Deborah. It's possible. God gave her the ability. The Bible said she was a judge. She was a housewife. She was, uh, what again? Um, she was uh, a prophetess. So, uh, God has given her that ability to be able to combat all those gifts that God gave to her because there was, there was anointing that God placed on her life to be able to carry it. If you don't have such ability and such anointing and such gift and try to do it without consulting, without having that strength, I don't think you will succeed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, ma'am. So, brethren, it is important for us to train ourselves and be trained. There is a place for training in ministry. There is a place where your ability, see, the difference between somebody that is trained and not trained is like this. Your ability can only take you here if you are not trained. But when you train, it takes you a little further. The people you, you connect to, the people you talk to will be different. Praise God. Yes. So my own question is, uh, um, how does one move from, um, I think we've answered some of it, but create that balance and, and at the same time move from 
mediocrity. In other words, just move from being complacent. Because I feel that a lot of us, we become complacent and become too familiar. How do we stir that up to increase? What do we do? Because no. we, most of us become too familiar and that's one thing that causes problems, right? Yeah. So. Thank you so much. Now, brethren, God expects every one of us, every one of us to sweat the brain, to use your brain, to be very cerebral in the way we do things. You know, there's what you can do with effort, there's what you can do with grace. Now, when you are not trained, that's why the Bible says, if a knife is not sharp, you need to put in effort, an effort to cut. But when it is sharpened, once you hit it, it cuts. And that's how it is. When you are trained, and when you give yourself to excellence, that is what is called excellence in ministry. You don't do things anyhow. No. Nobody will listen to you. Jesus could have come as a little boy and start his ministry as a little boy. Do you think they will listen to him? They probably saw maybe a few, maybe his age mates will listen to him. But he had to be there to be able to talk to kings and rulers in his days. He trained. He trained. Joseph, another example. Joseph didn't go to school, but the Lord trained him by the things that he suffered. Joseph, at the age of 17, left home. By age 30, he became the premier, the prime minister of Egypt. Between age 13 and seven, 17 and 30, those 13 tough years for Joseph, Joseph learned a lot. He learned in the house of Potiphar. He learned in prison, that little book I wrote. I said there was a course he needed to learn People and Resource Management 505. In other words, a 500 level course at the second semester with full understanding. He had to learn it in prison. The Lord took him to prison to teach him how to, how to use resources. So there is nobody God can use when they are not trained. Simple. If you are not trained, you cannot be used. If you are not available for God to train you and build your capacity, you cannot be used. So, train yourself. Get trained. Read books. You want to have access to somebody's life and anoint him. Read their book. Read the book. Listen to messages over and over again. Give yourself wholly to that assignment of God for your life. As a nurse, you can't just do... In this part of the world, nurses have what they call professional development, right? Accountants, lawyers, engineers. You step some time aside. You set some time aside to do what? Train yourself again and bring yourself up to date. And continuous training. As a matter of fact, in the accounting profession, they call it continuous professional development. Not some time, not one time. CPD, continuous professional development, year in, year out, year in, in year, in, each year you are meant to spend, I think, about 20 hours, minimum 20 hours studying every year. What are you doing? Building excellence. But believers, you sit down like this, ah, God will do it. No, he will not. I said he will not. God will not do for you what you can do for yourself. If you can't sweat your brain, he won't make your brain to sweat. You sweat your brain. You sit down, read, study, give yourself to it, to excellence. Embrace excellence. What you don't embrace, you cannot have. I pray that grace is delivered. These are how to build our capacity. And none of us will fall short of the assignment of God for our life. Do you know why many people are not in the assignment of God for their life? They have not trained. Mama, you have something to say? They have not trained themselves. They have not given themselves 
to the requirement. But tonight is going to be different from you. From now on, you will receive the grace. Bow your head where you are and say, Lord, I receive the ability, grace, grace to train, to train, to study, to learn, to read, to give myself only to understanding, give myself to understanding. Daniel said, I understand, I understood by the books. I understood by the books. Paul also understood. He said, I was under Gamaliel. I studied. I was in Arabia for three and a half years in the desert learning. Receive that grace right now. Open our eyes, open our understanding. Give us grace to learn to the glory and honor and the praise of your name. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now, brethren, we're going to go to the communion table. And I'll read to us from John chapter 6, verses 47 to 50 in the New Living Translation. And here is what it says. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, with confidence. This was Jesus speaking. Yes. Everyone say yes. Yes, I am the bread of life. Not, not a bread of life. I am the bread of life. So if you want life, you need Jesus. If you want life, you what? You need Jesus. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Next verse. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Now, there was bread in the wilderness. Manna. It was available, but it's incomparable to this one. They all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. Brethren, I present to you tonight the bread from heaven. Shall we all rise up, stand on our feet? Father, thank you for this bread from heaven. Everyone who eats of it tonight, we subscribe to life. We subscribe to healing. We subscribe to deliverance. Yokes are broken. Burdens are destroyed. As we approach this table tonight, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice, under any yoke of oppression, I command that oppression to be destroyed. This is the bread of life. As we partake, it of, partake of it, let your life flow into everyone under the sound of my voice in Jesus' precious name. Please take yours, cut it open, and let's get ready to eat of it together.
I heard the Spirit say, what kind of bread do you desire? The bread that you eat now, what do you want from it? In one minute, mention it to the Lord. Lord, I want healing. I want to be totally healed. I want to be delivered. I want yokes broken. I want bodies destroyed. I want the same life in you to flow in me. I want health. I want wellness. I want health. I want wellness. I cannot die of sickness. No, Satan, you are too small. Jesus is this bread I'm eating right now. I cannot die of sickness. Somebody be very vehement. Voice it out boldly. Say it out with boldness. I cannot die of sickness. No, take your dirty hands off me. Get out of my life. Go back to where you have come from. Go back to where you have come from. I take my total health tonight. Thank you, Lord. As we eat this bread, we have told you what kind of strength we want. Lord, for those who want healing, let them be healed. For those who want deliverance, let them be delivered. For those who want to be set free, let them be set free in the name of Jesus. And those who need divine strength, let them be strengthened. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, shall we eat together? Let's drink the blood and smear. Take the remnants in that cup. Smear it all over you. Cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus covering over me. I give you praise and glory in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time for us to pray to our God that answers prayer. He called us to pray because he wants to answer us. It's time for our personal supplication. Wherever you are, please uh, begin to take whatever position you want to take. Uh, I want to read from us uh, in First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. It says, Casting all your cares upon him, for he cared for you. Hallelujah. I don't know that care, that thing that has been disturbing you. The Lord cares. So cast all of those burdens and cares upon him because, because he cares. You have about a few minutes for this prayer encounter. You can begin.
begin to give him praise and thanks honor him thank you for answers magnify his holy name father we thank you for answers we give you all the glory Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for today's Bible study. My light has come. And God's glory shall be seen in all areas of my life this year in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the time during this service where we're going to be giving unto the Lord our tithes, our offerings, our first fruit, our seed. For our seed, we have various seeds that we can pledge. We have the Total Woman Conference 2024 coming up, and we have pledged unto the Almighty God. May the Lord God Almighty help us to redeem those pledges in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And we have our Thanksgiving offering, my prophet offering, and our building project. And let's always remember, we have vowed unto the Almighty God in December. May God give us the abundance to fulfill those vows as well in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So we're going to be reading the scripture concerning our giving this evening. And we'll be reading from Psalms chapter 116, verse 12 and 14. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? The Lord God Almighty has been kind to us. He has shown us mercy. He has blessed us in ways that we could never even imagine. He has blessed us materially. He has blessed us in things that money cannot buy. And we're saying we will pay our vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Amen and amen. And our second scripture is from Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 to 25. There's one who scatters, yet increases more. And there's one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. As we give unto God's kingdom, the Lord God Almighty will water each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And there are ways to give for us worshiping in the auditorium. We have POSs, upstairs and downstairs. If you happen to have cash or check with you, please ask an usher for an envelope so that you can package your offering. And for our dear family worshiping with us online, there are two ways by which you can give. You can give through the website, www.joyoverflow.church, or you can make an e-transfer to joyoverflowchurch at gmail.com. So if you are ready as I am, please rise up with your seed, with your tithe, your offerings, and lift them up unto the Almighty God, saying a big thank you to Him. Thanking Him because He's the God of abundance. He's the Lord of all our resources. Anything that we, are, we can be, anything that we can ever have comes from the Almighty God. Let us appreciate Him. Let's thank Him. Let's tell Him that we have come to give out of the abundance that He has given unto us. Father, Lord, we ask that you accept all of our seed tithes and offerings this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Can we cheerfully give our offering as the choir ministers? Amen. For the grace that you have given us, we can never repay you from our hearts. We like to say that we thank Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. For the grace, for the grace that you have given us. We can, we can never repay you, but from our hearts, we like to say that we thank you. We like to 
Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will increase us more and more in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that every spirit of poverty, any spirit of lack, every spirit of greed is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. We enter into our season, our season of manifold blessings, our seasons of prosperity, our seasons of breaking new grounds in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we have just come to say thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the adoration. Father, we pray, Father, for any individual, or any family that had a desire to give today, Lord, but was unable to give. Father, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, at the next opportunity, you shall give in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall give to you bountifully in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, for every one person that has made a pledge, a pledge to your kingdom, Lord. Father, Lord, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, because you are the Jehovah Jireh. Father, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you will bless us so much, O oh Lord, that we will surpass our pledges unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise and adoration in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Can we together welcome our Father in the Lord? Amen. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. What an awesome time in his presence tonight. Um, who can tell me what's happening on Friday? Praise night. And what time? 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. And what are we doing? We're just offering our gratitude to God and showing how grateful we are for the first quarter of the year, the first 90 days or thereabout in 2024. God has been good to us. How many of us have experienced the goodness of God this year? Yes. So we need to show gratitude to him as we meet here on Friday. And so for that reason, we're not going to have a prayer um, vigil on Friday, but we are here from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. giving praise to God. Is there anyone visiting us at Joy Overflow? For the first time, this is our own privilege to welcome you into Joy Overflow. If you are visiting Joy Overflow, this is your very first time here. We'd like to welcome you. Please stand to your feet as we sing and welcome you. Hallelujah. Joy Overflow welcomes you to the family of love. You are very special here. Now we just want you to know We say God loves the best We love it too That's the way it should We love you, we love it all God loves the best We love it too That's the way it should We love you, we love you God loves the best We love it too That's the way it should be God loves the best we love it too, that's the way it should be. Hallelujah. If you don't mind, just remain standing. We'd like to welcome you to Joy Overflow International Church, Calgary. You can see we are so excited to see you here tonight. And we pray that the hand of the Lord will rest upon you in Jesus' name. Should you be looking for a family church, this is the best place to be. I can tell you for sure. Now, if you look at the faces of all the people surrounding you, they are so joyful. That's our name. We are called Joy Overflow. And we pray for you that you shall overflow with the joy of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Church, are we super excited to see them? Let's stretch forth our hands and pour the blessing of our Father on them. 
We pour on you the blessing of God tonight. Blessing that lies in heaven. Blessing in the deep underneath the earth. And blessing on the earth. Blessing of wine and grain. Blessing of increase and abundance. Joy, peace, love. It shall be your portion all the days of your life. The way our God blesses us, He will bless you in the same fashion. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Now the ushers will be given to you a package. Inside that package, there is a gift for you. Beyond the gift, there is also a contact card. So we ask you, if you're a family, you can just fill one card and put the names of everybody on that card. Should you have a prayer request on the flip side of the card, please put the prayer request. We are a church. We pray every day. Church, is that right? We pray Monday through to Sunday. Our business is prayer. And God hears those prayer. So please write the request at the back side. And we are sure we're going to pray for you. And God will hear that prayer in Jesus' name. You are blessed and highly favored of God. Welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, brethren, as you go tonight, God's hand will be upon you. His glory will cover you. You have studied and learned at his feet tonight. What you have learned will grow you. Your capacity is built. Capacity for the assignment of God for your life is built. You sh your destiny shall not be truncated. Your destiny shall not be carried halfway. It shall be carried full way. In the name of Jesus, and the capacity to do what God wants you to do is delivered to you. As you pray, as you learn, as you study, the Holy Ghost will enable you and grant you that grace to fulfill destiny in grand style to the glory of his name in Jesus' precious name. With Jesus' joy shall we share the covenant together. Let's go. God will show me the part of life for in his presence is the fullness of my joy. And at his right hand, are my pleasures forevermore. Peace, love, and joy. Turn to your neighbor as you assure them, my glory is here. No loss, no pain, no shame. Turn to somebody else and assure them, my glory is here. No loss, no pain, no shame. No loss, no pain, no shame around your life in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God's goodness all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever in peace. Shall we take our family? Joy overflows in my heart Sing a new song to the Lord Joy, joy, joy